Welcome back to another quick video. I thought I'd have a look at the manual mode on cameras, but this time using the automatic ISO setting. So all you need to do is just set it to auto ISO and then pick the highest value that you are comfortable with in terms of the noise performance on the camera. When you're in automatic ISO, what will happen is when you adjust the aperture and the shutter speed, it will just adjust the ISO level within the levels that you've set. This means that you have both control of the aperture and the shutter speed at the same time, but you also have an automatic setting of the exposure using the ISO value. I'll demonstrate this now with a torch that I've got. It's normally a high ISO value, but when I turn the light on, higher power, you can see that the camera has adjusted the ISO level down to compensate for that. Best to think of this mode as an aperture priority and a shutter priority in one, because you are controlling those two parameters of the exposure but the camera is controlling the ISO value. Just remember if you go outside the value you've set for the ISO, it'll probably start flashing at you just to let you know that it can't set the level that it needs for the exposure. When you're using this mode, you'll also notice that you don't have any exposure compensation because of that floating ISO value. So all you need to do in this case is press the exposure compensation button. I'm gonna show it to you on the top panel and on the back LCD display. Then you'll be able to adjust the exposure compensation that you need to get the exposure that you want. The reason for this is because the ISO value is being set automatically, so you're gonna to have to use that exposure compensation. It behaves quite differently from when you've got the camera set into the normal manual mode where you've got the ISO set to a specific level. So if I set the camera to say ISO 100, you'll see that the metering on the screen is telling me that it's underexposed, so I'll need to adjust the aperture or the shutter speed or both of them to get the correct exposure that I want. That's when you've got the ISO value fixed and that can be quite useful at times when you need to have that. You can then go into the camera and adjust the ISO level that you want. One point to remember is that the metering mode will also make a difference in this. So whether or not you're using the spot, center weighted or multi-zone metering systems, that's gonna affect your overall exposure. On my camera, I have the front and rear dials set to shutter speed and aperture. So the auto ISO with manual gives you that additional control over both of them at the same time. This is a quick shot to show you some of the similar settings on a Nikon camera and on a Canon. You don't have to worry about a minimum shutter speed in auto ISO. It doesn't make any difference at all in this mode. I'll give you some examples of shots that I've taken. This camera has sensor-based stabilization, so I'm able to use the manual mode and select a slower shutter speed than I would normally have because I know that the sensor is stabilizing the image. Also for sports and action, it instantly allows you to very quickly change your aperture or your shutter speed to get the shot that you want and then it will just set the ISO level that it needs for the exposure. It's quite a useful mode when you need to have access to the shutter speed and the aperture at the same time instantly and you can't do that in aperture or shutter priority mode so it is worth checking out particularly if you do things like wildlife photography, events, action or sports where you might need to change those settings quite quickly. I found it quite a useful mode myself, not for every subject. There are some scene modes which will work better, and sometimes you want to have the full manual mode. It's definitely quite a useful mode, and I would recommend checking it out. 